Welcome to part one of the communication benefits from using style guide driven development. In this lesson, I'll talk about creating a common language. As an efficient development workflow, style guide driven development eases the conversation between different members of the team. New members can quickly familiarize themselves with patterns in the library, while designers and developers can discuss the design implementation by looking at interactive demonstrations of the UI instead of getting lost in mockups and prototypes. Additionally, product owners, testers, and stakeholders can use the style guide to learn about the interactions and behaviors defined in the guide and reference them as needed. Picture this scenario. You've been assigned a simple story about notifying a user that all the changes he made were saved successfully. In your mind, it is obvious that an alert message should be used. But when you tell this to your dev team, people have their own idea of what an alert message is. For example, a dev might think that you're talking about a JavaScript alert. Piece of cake, she thinks to herself. Then, on the other side of the room, or chat room for that matter, a stakeholder is actually wondering if they're talking about a modal or a pop-up. He's heard both terms for showing messages, so it's not clear to him which one you want to use. Does this sound familiar? This is probably not an uncommon case for many. Building a vocabulary is something that is natural when working on a project in a team environment. Because there are these things that we're building, we need to call them something. In user interfaces, there's already a vocabulary based on the common elements that are most likely used buttons, drop-downs, links, navigation bars, etc. However, even then, a button or something that looks like a button could be called control, call to action, or pill. Now picture how tricky communication can get as your UI grows and there are different kinds of buttons, popovers, and modals used throughout. This is when living style guides can come to the rescue, facilitating as a team how things are named, and have a common place where everybody can find information about it. Going back to our scenario, armed with a living style guide, you can quickly show everybody what you're talking about, a yellow warning alert message already coded and documented in the living style guide. Then everyone realizes those alerts have already been used before, and besides keeping consistent interactions in the app, they can also save work on the project because they've already been developed. So creating a living style guide is also about creating a common language for your UI. And therefore, as a glossary is created, it's important that the team is aware of and have an opportunity to participate in the creation of that vocabulary. A good time to do this is during the abstraction phase, when designs are being broken down into implementation stories. As your team reviews the new components that you'll be creating, you can talk about how to name them and even use those names in the stories that will be used during the sprint. In this way, from the beginning, everyone's on the same page, calling things the way that you all agree to. Now that you know how to hone in creating a common language for your UI as part of style guide driven development, let's move on to our next and last topic, centralizing documentation.